Cool. <laughs> don't say. <laughs> I said I don't want to call it yet, but we may not hit our goal. How's it going everyone? Welcome back to the Tacoma Beast channel where as you all know, it's all about the taco. Today, I am fulfilling one of my dreams. I've been dying to come up here to Canada and hang out with Crave Automotive. We've been talking through Instagram messages. We've been on Zoom calls. We were about to do it and then the virus happened. We had yeah. to cancel that and yeah. finally yeah. we're here. How's it going? Yeah. Five years later. Oh, awesome, man. Exciting. Awesome. Stoke, yeah, very man. Exciting. Where are you guys yeah. gonna take me? We're taking you to Ruby Falls. It's up in Northern Alberta. Uh, Canada, obviously, and it's gonna be wild. It's gonna be deep snow, water crossings, ice. We're not really sure what we're gonna get, but we're ready for it. What's the goal for us? The goal is to get to the falls, and as, if we get there, we met, we met our mission. That's that's it. Now, yeah. you guys told me that you've you've been there before, and sometimes you guys don't like the some trucks don't make it out. <laughs> yeah, we haven't made it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, sometimes yeah. trucks get on flat decks on the way home. Yeah. You know, breakages happen. Flat tires, mechanical issues, it's uh, its a battle. Well, I'm, yeah, uh, I it's hope you guys trip. have uh, all the tools yeah. necessary in case we go to that. You guys yeah, ready? Yeah, we do. Yeah. We're ready. We're ready, man. We got the tools, we got the gear, we got the truck. We really want to make this trip worthwhile. We really want to make it kind of show what Canada and Alberta has to offer. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to get on to Highway 40, it's the trunk road that connects many oil and gas and coal mining towns throughout Alberta. And the 40 has some of just the most beautiful scenery that I can think about in Canada. So the first area we'll be going through, we'll be going through the Ram Falls area, which is absolutely beautiful. Big cliff sides with just like black shale. And then we're gonna be going north up towards Nordegg, towards uh, the Ruby Falls trailhead uh, on the Cardinal River. My name is Bill. Uh, I'm 35 years old and I drive a 2008 Toyota Tacoma. I'm Ryan, age 37 as of this week driving a 2006 Toyota Tacoma. Well, my name is Matt and I'm 27 years old. I drive a third gen Toyota Tacoma. My name is Keith, I'm 29 years old. I was asked to come on the trip to kind of help out where I can in the support forerunner with David White this weekend. So here we are. away from Calgary already and we're just about to hit the trail. Let's air down and have a great time. We're gonna find deep snow and icy water crossings. It's gonna be epic. Today's video is brought to you by Onyx Off-Road. The reason why we're able to be on this trail today is actually thanks to their app. For less than a tank of gas, $29.99, Onyx Off-Road Premium is your navigation and trail discovery tool in the palm of your hands. It features trails, unlimited save maps, photos, waypoints, 3D maps, and more. Best part is, you can use our promo code TacomaBeast to receive 20% off your first year. So whether you're an experienced off-roader or just starting out, Onyx Off-Road has you covered. You see that sign, guys? That means we're about to burn some gas. <laughs> That's what that sign means. <laughs> you know, when Mateo said, hey, I'm flying up, we're making this trip happen, we sat down, we thought about it, and we were like, we got to make this epic. We got to find something that is a journey and a destination. And in Alberta, Ruby Falls is that destination. We got a truck stuck out in here. Car broke, that car. I just told these guys that I'm going to come backwards and clear the trail for them because they can't wheel. Just making fun of people getting stuck. What just happened? We just got stuck. <laughs> so good. Game plan is we're gonna stick on the trail. We're gonna stick kind of in the middle of the trail where it's harder packed from, from snowmobile tracks. And we're gonna just try to go nice and slow, nice and steady, and then try to get all your traction devices on. Let's do it. Let's go. Ready to roll?
guys, I'm not sure what that was right there. That was crazy, I was just running up the trail and I literally see this pack just running right next to me and I'm like, holy cow, that was insane. I'm there, I'm running right through the trail and I'm trying to get this shot of the trucks just passing by and I start to hear and I look to my side and out of excitement, I just, I said, oh my God, look at the moose. That looked like moose, but it's actually elk. And I, I'm freaking out with the camera, I'm trying to capture the shot and I somewhat got them. And it wasn't until later I meet up with Dave and he's like, dude, look at this shot I got. And boy, look how awesome this looks. That was insane. Let's keep going. Okay guys, it's time for the lights. Let's go. again and then there's that berm on the right and That's I just hit it and I'm like holy <laughs> and the truck jumps and Mateo's like whoa <laughs> Dude, that's holy cow. he's like I just hope the camera caught that what I went through <laughs> holy crap that yeah, awesome, that's man. gnarly that's, that's crazy <laughs> stuck right now <laughs> so they don't ask for help like you might think they're completely stuck and you're like that's it for them we got to winch them out we got to do something we got to do recovery boards they keep going back and forth until they just get themselves out man it's crazy. I think there's been a lot of surprises about uh, Canadian winter wheeling out here. A lot more to come and uh, yeah, I, I think he's gonna be shocked. One and down, Arnold, throttle man. out. They just get themselves out of the situation. Up. That's amazing. <laughs> so is this where we're gonna camp? This is yeah. it, this, this is, is it. we made it for tonight. Hell yeah. Tomorrow morning we'll, uh, we'll hit the trail. Let's do it. When Mateo landed, I remember some of his first comments. Man, it's cold out here. And for, for us, who's kind of used to this weather, you know, this is a, a beautiful spring weekend for us. Oh, when I saw him, he was, uh, he was wearing just jeans and a very, very light hoodie. And I was like, oh, this guy is in for a treat, man. How cold <laughs> is it right now, I guess? That's chill. Yeah, it's yeah, good. I think it's, cold. I think it's only minus uh, seven. I land in Canada, and the second I step out to get the Uber, I immediately get my little cart and I just turn around because of how cold it was. We're good. Yeah. This is Canada. Brian is just wearing like a hoodie. <laughs> yeah, we're good. I'm out here like freaking layered up. Yeah. And it's gonna be so cold. I hope he he survives. But in my mind, I was like, we gotta make sure that he's comfortable and he's having a good time. Brisk night, but we'll get the diesel heaters out and warm up by the campfire and have a great evening. Okay, guys, so obviously we got rooftop tents. It's cold out. We got to be able to survive out here. So, what we love to use is diesel heaters. 
So we've been using these planar heaters for the last three, four years now. Absolute game changers, huge thing for us. Uh, so basically, I've got it all plumbed in. There's a plumbing going into the tent. Uh, we got some kerosene here. It runs way better on kerosene. And then all I have to do is hit that button and you'll start hearing this stoke up. And then once it goes up, we'll have a nice warm tent. First night, uh, Bill had his vent like pointing right at him. And I walk in, I'm there trying not to wake him up. I didn't fully tuck myself into my sleeping bag all the way because I was confident. I'm like, dude, we have heaters, man. I, I could be on my underwear right now chilling, you know? And uh, that night was a little bit chilly. Every time I would turn around, it was like, tss, ah, tss, ah, you know, cold here and there. And then uh, the second night sleeping with Bill, he was awesome, man. He really took care of me. He made the vent point right at me to the point where, dude, for a second, I was, it got a little bit too warm. Those uh, heaters are something. I need to get that. that that's going to be cheating out in Salt Lake. So we're just checking out the trailhead, deciding where we're going to go tomorrow. So obviously it's looking really good right now, but you know, just snowmobile tracks. Yeah. So we're going to be following snowmobile tracks tomorrow and so hopefully you, we can get some traction up that hill. If you listen, you can actually hear running water. Yeah. Holy cow, you can hear it. Matt goes first. <laughs> <laughs> it's not company truck. I got I got this end up winching him up there. <laughs> I have a feeling it's going to be a rowdy day tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> There's going to be a lot of rev limiters and pinning it. <laughs> yeah. There's yeah. only three truckers. Oh, good. Yeah, good night. Warm night. Diesel heater did its job. We're alive. So let's get ready to go. Yeah. Boys got a fire going so we can get toasty, make some breakfast, and get rolling. Yeah. Do it. You guys ready for the trail? Oh, yeah. Heck yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Getting mugs, cups. Not going fancy here today. We're out there. <laughs> Just uh, reorganizing for today's next leg of the adventure, making sure we don't get any uh, chunks of wood through the back window. So, looking forward to uh, hitting the trails. We're up here at the Cardinal River water crossing. Water looks to be nice and frozen, so we'll be going up the hill here. Keep the speed up. And then as you guys see, we'll be crossing the ruby kind of up this way for the first time. And then the trail will kind of follow the river. As you can see, it kind of stays within the river because that's why we're going to be crossing it multiple times. And then as we talked about, we're going to get to Ruby Falls way up here, way up in the headwaters of the Ruby, uh, ruby River. Excited, let's go. Hey. Ruby see, Creek. See how frozen it is and how much trouble we get into. Gonna be good. Yeah. Let's go, boys. Let's do it. Heck yeah. Okay, guys, let's just check out the river, make sure we're good to go across. Yeah, it's probably thin there, so we'll uh, we'll just stay on the snowmobile tracks here. And so it is gonna be quite steep, and you're gonna probably want to keep it keep it going. You don't want to just stop. Stay on the tracks. Yeah. Okay. Awesome, guys. Let's rock. Get it. David. Oh, 
Woo! That was good. <laughs> that was intense, so it's good. Today is going good. Good morning. It's nice and... I wouldn't say it's too cold. It's nice and warm. The truck is feeling good. Everyone's having a good time. Yeah, so we're about 80% up the cut line here. We're just about to hit the river valley. Um, I'm feeling pretty good. Yeah, we got um, snowmobile tracks that we're kind of following. This, this, the trail's kind of set. I think it's cold enough that the water's going to be frozen. We're probably not going to dip our toes too many times. Uh, hopefully make it and have some fun here this morning later. So we're just about to hit the river here. If you look at the map, you'll see that we're coming out of the cut line. We've camped here before. And then we got that whole valley we get across. You'll see some skulls on there where we've had some breakdowns and didn't make it past in the recent years. So got a long ways to go, but we're feeling good about it. Water crossings change dramatically throughout the day. We're crossing Ruby Creek and I made it through just fine. Um, Ryan made it no problem, and then Matt got stuck. Ryan was enough to crush the ice. The water started seeping on top of the ice that they crossed, and the moment that happens, all of that hard packed ice on the top becomes soft. So I got a little concerned and as soon as I saw that happen, I radioed Ryan, hang tight because this might break. We tried a couple of times. I tried a different approach. Bill kind of coached me and because I couldn't see what was around me to come around to the right side. And as soon as I got up on one right, I was gonna pin it, and then as soon as I was about to pin it, there you go. Okay. Real cool. oh, okay. the ice broke again and it sunk me deeper, and that's when Bill was like, okay, you're gonna snap a CV if you try any harder, so we're gonna winch. Just another day. <laughs> so there's about an 18 inch ice ledge there, and he's just having a bit of a hard time getting the heavy truck up, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab the other truck, we'll probably just Maybe just winch him up, put in kinetic on that, might do some damage to the front, so we'll just slowly winch him up that ledge. Should be all right. Trying to get him in quick so we don't have water in the cab. Yeah, that went smoothly, so that was good. Heck yeah. Phew! <laughs> so guys, one thing that I always recommend to everybody is that make sure your recovery gear is accessible. Mine's always on my roof because I can usually get to that unless I'm upside down. But if it's in the back of a drawer system, it might be really hard to get if it's in the middle of the river. So we're just driving by field right now. We kind of know where to go. I got a GPS track and we're following the snowmobile track and I know that that track's somewhat hard so we're trying to stay on it. And there's also big rocks so we're trying not to hit those. We're coming up on one of our first major water crossings right now. Uh, we'll see how it is. If it's bridge, we'll be in good shape. But uh, two years ago, I broke a CV, bent a rim and uh, busted a bead in this crossing. So we'll see how she goes. RQ, this is where I busted the uh, the front CV and all that stuff, so it should be uh, interesting. It's pretty deep front locker. I was able to chew backwards, but we'll have to kind of keep sending it. I'm hoping we don't fall through because this is probably the one of the worst crossings out here. I definitely remember this one, man. Are you? I guess we gotta follow those tracks, eh? 
yeah, my goal is I'm gonna just kind of break some trail and then maybe try to hit it with speed because I don't really want to go slow. Let's go. Out here in the trail, um, I slowly started hearing the Crave Automotive crew talking about the ketchup. Give it some ketchup, man. I don't think I've been on the ketchup that much. And I, at the beginning, I was like, what the hell do they mean ketchup, man? These guys are, you know, they keep mentioning it. And it wasn't until I saw Bill and Ryan just going at it. Bill and Ryan showed me that there's a way out. There's always a way and just gotta keep going at it, just hitting that rev limiter. Going forward, backward, forward, backward. Get yourself out of that. That's gnarly, man. Yeah, bud. That's crazy. Give it a few minutes of cool down, man. Yeah, that's why I stopped. Just let her idle. Um, let everything do its if thing. If I could get on the left track, it might be better. But I don't know, I'm gonna go walk that left track. All right guys, I wanna show you something real quick. So we're, tr Bill's trying to cut his way through, make way for us. This right here is just basically ice crystals. The way I can compare it to is like the silt that we get down in Mexico or in Arizona, you know, like really, really hard to drive through. And on top of that, look at how deep this is. Like I just went straight down and it keeps going lower and lower. Plowing through this is definitely gonna be a challenge. If I can get on top of the hard pack, I think we'll be okay. The other trick I have is I do have some chains. It's always good to have an extra little trick in the sleeve, right? So, I got front locker, I got rear locker. Okay, well, what else you got? Okay, I got snow chains. You could put on your chains and I can kind of try and punch a bit. Yeah, why don't maybe you try to punch this and just see if you got Just take turns there. while maybe put on chains. Give it a go. crusty snow it's kind of wild out here I thought I was in for it and then a few bumps back and forth and managed to chew through it for a while get a little bit of momentum <laughs> yeah it's awesome we gave you some more hose what you guys working on putting the chains on try to get a little bit extra traction on the back don't have anything for the front because it's just too too tight up front. So we'll hope hopefully the chains gets just an extra little bit to get the chew going and make it up that way. Let's go boys, I'll move the truck forward.
it was insane to see them work through that until it got to the point where it was just obvious there was just too much snow. I was able to make it probably an extra 50, 100 feet, what have you. And, you know, the realization came that if I had to go that hard and, and just move that much snow, there wasn't any way that the guys coming behind me with 35s were gonna get there. So, I don't know what to do, boys. <laughs> PSI, oh, full like, send, as hard as I can send her, and hey. yeah, my diff's so hot it's melting a puddle <laughs> in the snow. Like it's it's gnarly. As much as we don't like giving up, you know, we got two trucks, one on 37s, one on 38s, and we're buried over the diffs. I think might be safest just to backtrack out of here, and we'll go show you two other trails. We'll still hit a waterfall, and it'll still be epic, but. I don't think anybody's getting through here until the summer. Conditions were changing so fast that we made a, a safety decision to turn back. Ultimately, the fact that we didn't destroy anything major on the truck, um, that's a win for me. So many times we've been out on that trail and it, it beats trucks up. You know, we've flat deck trucks, we've had so many trailside repairs and to have that much enjoyment, that much excitement, that much adventure and still be able to make it hundreds of kilometers, hundreds of miles, <laughs> I should say, um, back down another trail, that's a win. Sucks that we can't keep going, but all the way up until this point, I've had an absolute blast. And this has made me want to keep coming back to Canada. It's unreal out here. All the experience that I had already seen up until the point that we got stuck, I could turn around that very second, go back home, and be absolutely excited about what I just went through. It was more than I was expecting. I was like, dude, this is insane. I was bummed out, but uh, I knew that there was way more to see in Canada. To me, this is freedom. This is getting out, getting away. Um, almost like church, if that makes any sense. Um, it's peace, it's, it's a time to reset. I don't have my phone bugging me, I don't have distractions. I can just enjoy the moment, the experience, and uh, um, yeah, the quiet, everything, the people, like, I love it. This is like a getaway to me. I'm tired, but I also don't want it to end. Like, I, I love spending time here in the mountains, no matter how tired I am, I would always prefer to be here. And spending time with such a good crew, everyone's just balances out everybody. The energy is always so high, it's just, it's hard to say, ah, it's time to go home. But, like, you get, there's people always waiting for you back home, so you have to eventually head home and go back to normal life again. It's the last night and you start to get a little bit like sad, right? You're like, man, this trip is coming to an end. And Bill puts me off to the side and he's like, dude, I need to show you something. So I drop everything I'm doing and he like starts walking away from camp. And I'm like, dude, man, I was like right next to the fire. I'm all warmed up. Now I'm like freezing and he like keeps going. And I'm like, where is he taking me? What? And he turns around and he's like, look at that, dude. And he, and he shows like, he shows our camp with the pine trees and the stars. And that moment, I just started thinking how this community, we're all so similar. And no matter where you go, no matter if you're in the States, no matter if you're in Canada, no matter if you're in Australia, there's something that we share. And it's that love for just craving, staring at the stars at night, looking at a mountain peak and just admiring it and being like, like, why is it that we admire just, it's a rock, a mountain, right? But we all love it and we share that. And it doesn't matter if you believe differently, like in politics, religion, it doesn't matter, none of that. That off-roading passion that we have unites us in a way where we forget all that and we go back to like our roots of just being human. So tonight we're gonna be having 
triple A Canadian steak. I don't know why, but uh, I think they're gonna be really good. So is it done, Ryan? We got a first batch done. We'll give you ready to eat. For Tacoma Beast, Mateo to come up here. Uh, it's kind of a dream come true. You know, we've had this plan to do a Canadian winter trip since 2020. And you know, when the world shut down, that trip got shut down and that dream didn't go away. We kept talking about it and we kept thinking like one of these days we got to make it happen. And I'll be honest, we're, we're just honored and so proud that Crave and myself got chosen to be the first ever Canadian snow adventure for Tacoma Beast. Um, Mateo is such an awesome guy, such an awesome company, and it, it truly just means a lot. First one, we cook. You want a second, you cook. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. Ruby Falls was the original goal, but I wanted to show him something special. I wanted to show him something that people see on Instagram or people hear about, but not everybody gets to go to. And we had to make it at least an epic ending to an epic journey. We're gonna head down to the 40. We're gonna go into the ghost public land use zone. And we're gonna go up the Transalta Road. And uh, we're gonna go show you frozen waterfall. Dude, I cannot wait. Yeah. These guys are about to show me frozen waterfalls. <laughs> Let's get it. Let's go. Let's go, guys. We got into the valley this morning. We were driving and it's like, okay, the conditions are good. And eventually we get through the first water crossing. And then you come around that last corner, you go across that last water crossing and you just, in the corner of your eye, you see that falls and you're like, dude, dude, look, we're, we're there. Feels like, dude, right after this turn, we're gonna make it to the falls, man. We're here, it's happening, and I start to get excited. I'm a little bit concerned, because since we didn't make it to the true falls that we wanted to do it, I thought that they were just gonna bring me to this like little tiny little fall, just so that, you know, like, yeah, we made it to the falls, and dude, when I see this falls, this thing is massive. It's like a, a wall of art, you know, that just, I'm like, how the hell did that, freeze like that you know massive wall and I'm just so thankful that the guys brought me out here this thing is this is amazing ultimately as much as we want to go to Ruby showing him something that's local that's true to our heart something that we do multiple times in the season uh, it, it's almost fitting that that's the way it ended we officially made it to GBU Falls at Ghost Valley. Dude, this place is insane, epic, just staring at all these mountains. And it was all thanks to the Crave Automotive team. Dude, you guys, thank you so much for real for giving me this experience these last couple days. Yeah, man, like we had a, we had a lot of trial and error. We tried to go to Ruby Falls first, way too much snow. And, uh, you know, we, we put in a good effort, but, you know, I had to regroup, put in a lot of miles. and. We freaking made it, so yeah, we're Dude, here. I got a little bit scared. I was picturing like something like that <laughs> tiny, <laughs> tiny little one up there. But this is massive, this is huge, man. So yeah. thank you so much. You guys enjoy this video. Make sure to smash that like button. If you haven't already done so, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And we will all see you on the next episode because we're coming back you to bet. hit Ruby Falls. Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah.